Hey everyone, welcome to the video. In this video, I'll be covering the Russian doll envelope problem on Unicode. I'll be discussing the ON log n time solution for the problem in a way that will hopefully help you see how you might have discovered the solution yourself. I'm only assuming a prerequisite that you're familiar with the ON log n time algorithm for the longest increasing subsequence of an array. You don't need to know the exact details of the algorithm, just that there's an ON log n time algorithm that can solve the longest increasing subsequence in ON log n time. I also have a video on the longest increasing subsequence problem in case you want to truly understand the ON log n time solution, which I will link in the description. With that in mind, let's get started. Now before I describe the problem, I wanted to take a quick tangent on the name of this problem. If you're confused on what a Russian doll has to do with the problem, just like I was, then it would make sense to at least see what a Russian doll is. A Russian doll is actually a bunch of dolls that look similar to each other and are in progressively bigger size. They're designed in a way such that the smallest one can fit in the second largest, and the second largest can fit in the third largest, and so on and so forth, until they all fit inside the largest doll. So with that out of the way, I think the problem will make a bit more sense for you. In the Russian doll envelope problem, we're given a set of n envelopes, e1 to en, where envelope ei has width wi and height hi. We're tasked with finding the maximum number of envelopes that we can Russian doll, or insert inside one another. For example, suppose we're given the following five envelopes. Then we can Russian doll four of the envelopes, as shown, to get a chain of four envelopes. Another way to Russian doll two envelopes is also shown. However, the most number of envelopes that we can chain here is four, and so the answer should be four. Note that we're assuming that we cannot rotate or even fold an envelope. More formally, an envelope EI fits inside envelope EJ if and only if WI is less than WJ and HI is less than HJ, or both the width and the height of EI is strictly smaller than EJ. Now, when dealing with problems like this, a very useful step is to start by characterizing the optimal solution. This is just a fancy way of saying to imagine that an oracle allowed you to peek at the optimal solution. So suppose the oracle gave you indices i1 to ik and told you that envelopes ei1 to eik are the optimal envelopes and that they are in descending order of width. The second step is to try to prove some structural properties on the optimal solution. What do we know about opt? Well, we know that EI2 fits inside EI1. And this happens if and only if WI1 is greater than WI2 and HI1 is greater than HI2. We can apply this inductively, which would imply that the width are in descending order and the heights are also in descending order in any optimal solution. What did we just show? Well, we showed that if there are k envelopes, i1 to ik, that fit inside each other, then it must be that their width and heights are in descending order. These are what we call necessary conditions. They are conditions that must apply to the optimal solution. Step 3 is to finally go back to our reality, where unfortunately there are no magical oracles to give you the optimal solution. However, by our imagination, we managed to prove some very important necessary conditions. The final step is to check if those necessary conditions are actually themselves sufficient. What I mean here is, suppose instead I told you that there are k indices i1 to ik with descending width and height. Does that mean that there are k envelopes that can be fit inside each other? If you think about it for a while, you realize that the answer is simply yes. Simply choose envelopes EI1, EI2 to EIK, and those must fit inside one another, by definition. What we have here is called a full characterization of the optimal solution. 
We just proved that there's a set of k envelopes that we can Russian doll if and only if there are k indices i1 to ik with descending weights and heights. With this characterization, we can now restate the problem. The problem now becomes find the maximum number of indices i1 to ik such that their width and heights are increasing. Now, here's an idea. Instead of worrying about the sorted order of both the width and the height of the envelope, let's just for now initially sort all the envelopes in descending order of width. So the original input becomes something like this. Now what does our problem become? We again want to find the maximum number of increasing indices, not just indices but increasing indices, such that the height are strictly increasing. This problem now feels extremely similar to the longest increasing subsequence. In fact, if you stare long enough, you realize that it's actually the longest decreasing subsequence problem on the heights. If you imagine that all the envelopes are sorted in decreasing order of width, then the longest decreasing subsequence in terms of the heights is what we're looking for. However, if you run this algorithm on a small test, you might realize the following technical problem. Specifically when there are multiple boxes or rectangles or envelopes with the same width. Suppose you have 5 rectangles with the same width, but heights 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. If we sort the rectangles by width, then we might get this order. The maximum number of envelopes we can Russian doll here is only one because all the width of the rectangles are the same. However, the longest decreasing subsequence is of length 5. So something seems to have gone wrong in our characterization. If you think about it carefully, you might notice that this problem only happens for rectangles with equal width. The sorting algorithm doesn't really care how it solves ties in the width, so the longest decreasing subsequence on the heights might have two envelopes with wi equals wj, but hi greater than hj. In other words, the longest decreasing subsequence algorithm is tricked and might take two or more rectangles with the same width but decreasing heights. So how do we fix this problem? Take a minute and think about a way to fix this problem for envelopes with equal width. Think of a secondary sorting approach that we could sort envelopes with equal width on to prevent the longest decreasing subsequence algorithm from choosing more than one envelope with the same width. I'm sure if you spend enough time, you can come up with this trick. For envelopes with the same width, simply do a secondary sort on the height in ascending order. Why does this work? Because if the longest decreasing subsequence of the algorithm chooses one of the envelopes, then all the envelopes after it with the same width will have monotonically increasing heights. So the longest decreasing subsequence algorithm can choose at most one envelope from each group of envelopes with the same width. Here's the algorithm. We first sort the envelope in descending order of their width, and in case of ties between width, in ascending order of height. Next, we find the longest decreasing subsequence in terms of their heights. How do we do this? Well, a neat trick is that the longest decreasing subsequence of A is the longest increasing subsequence of negative A, where negative A is all the elements of A is simply negated. I'll leave this as a fun small exercise for you to try to prove. This means that we can just run the on log n time algorithm for the longest increasing subsequence on the negated heights to find the answer. I'll leave a C++ and Python implementation in the description for you to reference. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed, please feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. I'm hoping that you have a great holiday and until the next video, I'll see you soon.